Yo, what's team? My name's Ben, and let's talk heart failure. So what heart failure is, it's the inability of the heart to generate enough cardiac output to meet the body's needs. So basically, our heart is a pump, and its job is to pump blood around the body. Heart failure is when it fails in its job. So the two things a pump has to do is it's got to contract, and it's got to relax so it can fill up again. So that's why we've got two types of dysfunction. Systolic dysfunction, just like systolic blood pressure, is the pressure on the walls of the artery when the ventricles contract. Systolic dysfunction is when we've got impairment and contractility. So we get a good amount of blood coming into the heart and filling up the ventricles, which is preload, but the heart has a problem contracting so it can't empty out all the blood that got filled into it. So this is called an, a decreased ejection fraction. So ejection fraction is a comparison between the preload, the amount of blood that filled up the chamber, the ventricle, and the amount of blood that got ejected out of it. So normal is about 55 to 70%. So 55 to 70% of the blood should get ejected out of the heart. But if we've got systolic dysfunction, we're going to have less than that because the contractility is decreased. So here's the ventricles. It's got weak walls and it's not pumping properly. A common cause of systolic dysfunction would be myocardial infarction because when we have an MI, a portion of the heart dies and dead meat don't beat. So therefore, the rest of the wall has to contract, whereas that dead portion doesn't, so we can't get as much blood out. So that's systolic dysfunction. Then we also have diastolic dysfunction. So this, we have a good contraction, but a poor relaxation, because diastole is the period of time when the ventricles relax and they should be filling up with blood. Ventricular relaxation impaired. So with this one, we've got a normal ejection fraction at 55 to 70%, but we don't have as much preload. So if our ventricle has trouble relaxing and doesn't open up fully, then it's not going to fill up with as much blood as it possibly could. So when it contracts, it can still squeeze out 55 to 70%, but it just didn't fill up as much, and that's where the problem lies. So here's an example of a ventricle that could have diastolic dysfunction. An example of how this could happen would be hypertension. So if we've got hypertension, there's too much pressure in our arteries, every time the, the ventricle contracts, it's got to overcome all that tension to get blood out of the ventricle. So we've got too much afterload, so the heart constantly has to be working hard to overcome the afterload of the hypertension. So if you work a muscle, just like any other muscle, it's gonna get bigger and stronger. But the problem with the heart, if the ventricle wall gets bigger and stronger and thicker, so hypertrophy, now the volume inside is smaller. So when the heart tries to relax, there's a smaller bucket for that blood to come in. So if we've got less blood coming in, we have less going out. Gorgeous. Okay, now let's talk about the difference between left and right side heart failure. First of all, let's draw the circulation through the heart. We need to know this. So if we start at the right atrium, the blood is going to go from the right atrium to the right ventricle. It's going to come out and it's going to go to our lungs. Then the blood's going to come back from our lungs and come into our left atrium, left ventricle, and then it's gonna come back and it's gonna come out to our body. And then from our body, all the stuff above the heart comes back in via the superior vena cava, and all the stuff below the heart is gonna come back in via the inferior vena cava. Boom. So there's our circulation of the heart, and you should be able to draw that 
nice and easy. Now, if we look at one side of the heart failing, what's going to happen? So this is the right side. The right side takes blood from the rest of the body and sends it to the lungs. So if the right side of the heart fails, then it's going to be slow at delivering the blood to the lungs. So it's going to start to back up, back into the body. Whereas on the left side, the left side, it takes the blood from the lungs and then it's going to give it to the rest of the body. So if the left side of the heart fails and it's not pumping blood away from the lungs, then we're going to get a build up of blood pressure in the lungs. So now let's think about what symptoms we're going to have. On the right side, if we're getting less blood going to the lungs and it's all backing up into the body, what's going to happen? So we're going to notice our jugular veins running through here, they're going to start to get full of blood. So we're going to get jugular vein distension, so bulging out. Then if the blood is building up around the stomach, we're going to get edema or swelling through the abdomen, and that's called ascites. And then if blood is building up in our peripheral circulation, it goes wherever gravity takes it. So if your feet are down, then we're going to get swelling in our periphery, peripheral edema, so swelling of our legs. So the right side of the lung, it's going to back up in the rest of the body. Jugular vein distension, ascites, and peripheral edema. Then if we go to the left side, so the left backs up. It should be taking the blood from the lungs and sending it to the rest of the body. But if it's not doing its job as a pump, and it's not pumping it away to the body, it's going to get built up back in the lungs. So if we get lots of pressure in the lungs, we're going to get fluid accumulating in the lungs, and that's cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So cardiogenic, cardio, heart, genic, Genesis, first book in the Bible, creation. This is a problem that's created because of the heart. Pulmonary means lungs. Edema means fluid. Cardiogenic pulmonary edema, a buildup of fluid in the lungs because of a problem in the heart. All right, there's our heart failure, systolic and diastolic dysfunction, and left and right-sided heart failure. So remember... Alpha left, left will back up into the lungs, cardiogenic pulmonary edema, and then R for right, right, R, rest of the body. So jugular vein distinction, ascites, and peripheral edema. All right, team, happy studying.